Hi, I'm Tim. Please join me in this video as I discuss the change of the Remote ID compliance date, some myths associated with Remote ID, as a background information on the drone industry and Remote ID that I think will be helpful. Let's get to it. Today is September 20th, 2023. I have been unable to make videos for the past several weeks. I've been out of the country on travel, visiting Turkey. Uh, if Turkey ever fits your travel plans at any time, it's just a wonderful place to visit. Tremendous history there with Greek and Roman ruins. And you'll notice also that there are prohibitions on drones flying in those areas. So the important main news that everybody should be aware of uh, September 20th is that the compliance date for remote ID ruling has been extended six months by the FAA. Most people saw this coming. The reason that drove all of this is the remote ID module non-availability. The FAA made its announcement on September 13th, 2023, three days before the remote ID compliance uh, came in. And th this is the words from the FAA. Drone pilots who are unable to comply with the broadcast requirement of remote ID will now have until March 16th, 2024 to equip their aircraft. After that date, operators could face fines and suspensions or revocation of pilot certificates. In making this decision, the FAA recognizes the unanticipated issues that some operators are experiencing finding some remote identification modules. And then it goes on, they can purchase a module. So again, a lot of people, or many people, are a little bit upset that the FAA didn't nail this correctly in the compliance date. I understand that. I'm not going to argue with anybody. It's just with this final ruling, the um, predictions on when the modules will be available for everybody to be remote ID compliant, to include the FRIAs, the FAA re um, re recognized identification areas, were made a long time before those dates came into effect, and they were just hoping that the modules would be ready. The modules were not ready. The only one really that's affordable under $100 is the Spectrum Sky ID system. I did notice that the folks out of Flight Test have their um, Easy ID available at about the same price. I also noticed today that it's out of stock, so people are ordering them. So the six month period should be adequate time for people to get the remote ID modules to be compliant with the remote ID ruling by March 16th, 2024. There are probably going to be other manufacturers coming in at that time. And so, again, with the process, people are asking, well, why didn't the FAA simply change the date to March 16th, 2024? Why are they kind of playing this word game that the um, enforcement is going to be delayed until then? The reason for behind that is when the FAA makes regulations in, in the government term, they're actually called rules. The FAA rulemaking process is a very involved process. It can take up to three years. The reason this is an involved process is it's a big deal because the bureaucracy, the FAA, under the supervision of Congress, is making rules that affect people, their flights, their licenses, fines, and things of that nature. It's a very strict and um, organized process because these are not laws passed by Congress. It's been delegated to the FAA in partnership with Congress to do this stuff. So we saw with the final ruling on remote ID itself, you had the notice of proposed rulemaking. It went out for comments. We had about 53,000 comments. The FAA had to examine all those comments and you can see what the FAA thought about those comments in the remote ID final ruling. The final ruling is about 490 pages. I've gone through it. It discusses all why they did this, why they accepted some when there was complete disagreement that the path that the FAA chose. And the, the final ruling is important because that is what the FAS is stick by. So for example, when the remote ID ruling of September 16th, 2023 came into effect, that's the date. An individual person just can't change that date to March 16th. It would have to go through that whole notice of proposed rulemaking, comments, publish in the Federal Register, all that stuff before it could uh, be complied. So the workaround for the FAA is this is being filmed September 20th. We're supposed to be remote ID compliant at this time. In other words, if you're flying a drone and you're, or, and you're not in a FRIA for recreational purposes only, the FAA recognized the identification area, you should be remote ID compliant either with standard ID installed in the factory or a module. But what the FAA is saying, due to circumstances they understand, 
they're simply not going to do any enforcement action until after March 16th, 2024. Again, this is a normal thing for government agencies. Uh, many of us perhaps have um, ourselves or friends that have been stopped by police when you're speeding. Let's say you're 10 miles over the speed limit. The cop, the police has it, uh, discretion, uh, depending on the department, what they do about that. It could be a verbal warning, could be a written warning, it could be a speeding ticket. So this is a similar thing with the remote ID enforcement. It's the equivalent of we're just going to give you verbal warnings, i.e. do nothing until March 16th, 2024. And that keeps in spirit that just the modules aren't ready. And then um, after March 16th, we'll have a clear idea of what, what is going to happen with the FAA and uh, enforcement at that time. Another benefit of the um, extension of the remote ID compliance date to March 16th, 2024, is it's going to give everybody, community-based organizations and the AMA, six months of extra time to get the FRIAs approved, the FAA recognized identification areas. Again, FRIAs for our, um, areas where recreational models, mo recreation modelers with RC models weighing uh, over 250 grams can fly without any remote ID equipment at all. Just keep the model the visual site and you fly within the FRIA. So I get um, emails all the time from viewers who are their AMA clubs have been approved for the FRIAs. I think the AMA is making good progress on this. Uh, remember, the AMA was the first community-based organization recognized by the FAA to work the FRIA process. That was back in November of 2022. Understand the remote ID final ruling gave the FAA authorization to offer FRIAs, but there were no details in that ruling, and this is the way it normally works over how you do a FRIA, what constitutes a FRIA, what, what is a FRIA, and so forth. That is being worked out now. I think the AMA probably has close to about a thousand FRIAs approved to include some that were denied and were approved. I noticed also the flight test folks out in Ohio, uh, their flying area was initially disapproved for a FRIA and has since been approved. So I think the, the um, FAA is having a better understanding what it, makes a FRIA process going to be approved. We don't know that now. I think we'll find out later on as the system settles down and matures. So that six months is going to be a pretty good time for the FAA to, or for the AMA to get all the club applications resolved one way or another. There's probably about 2,500 clubs out there uh, with the AMA. I would expect most would be um, requesting some sort of FRIA status. One of the, the myths that I've seen in the comments uh, for my videos, and I, I greatly appreciate the comments, somebody came up with the idea that there was a limit of 4,000 FRIAs, and that was the upper amount. There couldn't be any more beyond that. Again, that is not true. The reason it's not true is that if it was true, it would be in the final ruling of remote ID. There is no mention of an upper limit. Uh, it just gives the four community-based organizations that are allowed to apply for the FRIAs. The other thing you'll see very clear in the final ruling on remote ID is the FAA wants to encourage the STEM, the science uh, students, um, for applying for a FRIA so they can fly model airplanes to learn about aviation and pipeline for careers and so forth. I think the holdup is there's a fair amount of bureaucratic work to get a FRIA approved. The AMA is in this full force. That's why they are the leaders of getting the FRIAs approved to this date. As the process becomes more understood, I think the individual schools will have more of an ability to apply for a FRIA status, and that will just expand the number of people, recreational flyers that can enjoy radio control model flight, whether, whether drone or fixed wing. Continuing on with some myths or perhaps misunderstandings might be a better word for remote ID. I've seen some comments that believe that there is differentiation between standard remote ID, which is installed by manufacturers in the, in the factory for drones. Uh, that was required after December 22nd, 2022. So we've had pretty close to nine months of drones being produced with standard remote ID completely compliant out of the factory and the remote ID module. There are several remote ID modules out there. The FAA lists them. Some of them are very expensive European ones. The two probably easiest plug and play ones now, and I don't get any money for this, I'm just um, reading the various reports, are the Spectrum Sky ID and the Flight Test um, Easy ID, both about $100. They look like very capable modules for that. But in terms of compliance with the remote ID ruling, 
all of those remote ID modules standard have to have what's called a um, Declaration of Compliance, a DOC from the FAA, which means they meet the technical requirements to perform the remote ID functions in the national airspace system. So there's no differentiation. If you have a remote ID system that has a Declaration of Compliance from the FAA, you are good to use that system. They'll have different operational capabilities and do different things perhaps in the field, but they make your drone remote ID compliant. The other thing that I've seen in comments is for some reason people are getting the idea that the remote ID ruling officially started September 16th, 2023. So the FAA is simply not enforcing compliance for six months, but the rule is still out there. Uh, there are some people that believe that in the period from now until March 16th, where the FAA is not um, forcing compliance with the ruling, that somehow the AMA insurance no longer covers you. That is not true. The AMA insurance that is part of your AMA membership does, is, is not dependent on the remote ID ruling. And let's go ahead and hear uh, Ms. Irene Main, the Club Services Senior Director of the Academy of Model Aeronautics, what she has to say about this. I also want to emphasize that AMA membership benefits are not contingent upon remote ID compliance or flying at a FRIA location. The other item of confusion is how long uh, FRIAs, the FAA recognized identification areas, are going to be um, around, how long they last. In the remote ID final ruling, FRIAs are good for 48 months, that's four years. Now the FRIAs can be taken away, let's say a hospital is built in a FRIA site that makes it no longer FRIA compliant. So FRIAs can be taken away if a club disbands, that can be taken away, but there's nothing in the final ruling that, sa that says that they are going to be anything less than four years. The ruling does state they can be renewed if the FRIA um, conditions are met. That's what the ruling says. We'll have to wait to see four years from now if that's true or not. But right now, FRIAs will, will be part of the remote ID landscape, and it's a common sense solution. It doesn't cost anybody anything. It's just some bureaucratic work. The process seems to be getting pretty good for approving it, and it allows recreational modelers flying at an AMA club site in a defined FRIA area, recreational models over 250 grams. They just don't need any remote ID equipment for their models in that FRIA. Finally, there's still a lot of angst among models over the whole concept of remote ID. Um, models are saying, I'm not going to comply, so forth. And, and that's an individual decision. I will comply. It's a regulation. I don't think it's the end of the world. My club does have a FRIA for my recreational flying. I've bought the Sky ID remote ID module. So we'll see how that works out. But what I do want to point out, and I will continue to do this in videos, is where we are all at the pretty exciting point at the beginning of a new industry, this commercial drone industry. There is so much potential in what drones can do, it's almost too hard to quite understand. And I will offer little um, vignettes and updates on what's going on in the world of commercial drones um, and just how quickly they're advancing. Because that's important, they are the ones that are setting the pace, setting the dialogue, having the discussions with Washington on remote ID. And it's important for us to understand the commercial operators are absolutely behind the remote ID. They think it is an absolute first step on what will eventually be a global industry of unmanned aircraft um, just doing a bunch of things. And um, what I want to do is just introduce a, a member called, an organization called AUVSI. That's the Association for Uncrewed Vehicle Systems International. And it's the world's largest nonprofit organization dedicated to the advancement of uncrewed systems and robotics, corporations, professionals. It's 7,000 members from 60 countries, and they are advocates for getting stuff done with drones. And what they want to do, what their goal is, is completely integrated operations of manned and unmanned aircraft in the national airspace system. We can't do this right now due to technology because drones cannot see and avoid other aircraft. So the professional operators see remote ID as an extremely important first step in eventually integrated manned, unmanned operations. Now, will the first generation that we're getting into today, um, 2023 of remote ID, how's that gonna work with the um, 
type five, type five Bluetooth and so forth? I don't know. I don't think anybody knows because it has not been tested in a real world environment. But the analogy I use for remote ID is um, for the younger viewers out there, there was a time when you could not watch TV or video shows on your own, about, unless it was broadcast live. About 1980, the VHS cassettes first came out. You could watch and record TV shows through the VHS tape, big clunky boxes. After that was digi digital video discs, and now today everything streams. That is an advance of technology that happened. The same thing's gonna happen with remote ID. Whatever the second, third, fourth generation is, it's just going to get um, better suited to allow the FAA to have an awareness of what unmanned vehicles are flying in the airspace system, where the operator, the pilots of those drones are, someday perhaps traffic deconfliction, not yet. So I just wanted to point out a statement from the uh, AUVSI on the remote ID from uh, their chief advocacy officer, Michael Robbins, on the statement of the remote ID extension. Um, the FAA has estimated the number of recreational hobbyist non-commercial drones will reach 1.5 million by 2024. Furthermore, drones are increasingly used as industrial tools and for public safety, saving lives, money, enhancing safety and security. In increasingly busy airspace, the needs of airspace stakeholders must be harmonized with those of law enforcement agencies. Now what they say, this is a, a fairly influential organization. The FAA's remote ID rule appropriately advances drone integration in a way that increases safety for all airspace users. The final rule has been subject to a lengthy rulemaking process, open comment periods, publication of means of compliance, judicial review, and extended dead, deadlines. And the AUVSI urges drone operators to comply with the remote ID requirements as quickly as possible so the FAA to swift, swiftly implement all agency rulemaking. Remote ID is necessary to ensure the continued expansion of scalable and secure drone operations in the national airspace system, which will bring significant benefits to the American public and business. And the other thing I'd point out is the headquarters of the AUVSI, 7,000 members, 60, 60 countries, is in Arlington, Virginia. For those of you that don't have access to a map, Arlington, Virginia is a metro stop away from Washington, D.C. There's a reason they're in Arlington. They work this issue full time with the U.S. government, with the FAA, to get remote ID up and running. As recreational, even Part 107 users for the drone operations, they are setting the marching pace for remote ID. Remote ID is here to stay. It is not that big a deal. We'll work through any issues of it as the remote ID becomes part of our everyday RC hobby flying. So that's the update for now. Again, the remote ID is extended to March 16th, 2024. This will give us plenty of time to get everything settled down, more, re more remote ID modules, more FRIAs, and just go on to the next step with RC model airplane flying. Thank you.